Hello, everybody, and welcome to our review of The Killing Joke, is what this movie is called. All right, I guess we'll just have silence then. (laughs) Yes. I just told you, I said three, two, one, record. You you said three, two. (laughs) Yes. Batman, the killer joke. Hey, guys. I'm not. Welcome to our movie review. That's fine. I, it's still your fault. <laughs> God damn it! I'm saving this. This was funny. It's but been yeah. thirty seconds. <laughs> I'm saving. Got it. I hate you. Same. Yeah, you hey can guys. edit your part out. I just started recording right now because Marcus. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. So it's been thirty so, seconds, and I haven't cursed. It, it's been a minute now. You're good now. Fuck, shit, bitch, dick, ass. There you go. I'm glad we brought that joke full circle. Anyway, um, what the fuck is the movie that we're talking about today? Batman. Today, we're... Oh, Carlos, you take Sorry, it. Then. No, no, Dylan, you had something better. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, we're going to be reviewing Batman the Killing Joke. Puppy. That's literally all I had. This was the this was the movie that we uh, discussed last podcast um, about reviewing. I think yeah. about reviewing. Um, we did the the Raven one. What was it? Teen Titans. It was like the Teen Justice Titans League. versus Justice League that I That's just never was. seen. My dog is going to ruin everything. <laughs> ah no! He's pulling all of my cords out by walking through everything. Oh no. Oh no! In the meantime, Dylan, let's fill it. Um, All right. Yeah, guys. So uh, I'm gonna let him out. Haven't listened to our movie reviews yet? We basically have a simple structure. We're gonna do. Each of us are gonna give our own reviews. um, Spoiler free, real quick. Just gonna give a quick review synopsis, right, of what the movie was to us. Um, We're trying some now. I haven't watched this movie since it came out. I believe it was 2016, 2017. So I've watched it before. But I didn't watch it this time around, just to kind of give us a, like a, kind of go into this fresh. I don't know, like, see how that works out. I'll give my review based on what I remember, and then the guys will give their reviews. We'll all give our ratings from 0 to 10, right? And then from there, we'll start talking about the movie, actually going in depth on what we remember, on what I remember specifically, and then they'll go in depth on what they saw in the movie, what their likes, dislikes, my likes, dislikes. We'll Whatever all, he said, yeah. Yeah, and then from there... At the end of it, we'll all just sum it up and see if our ratings have changed by then. All right? So um, Yeah. No, Doji was like, if you don't let me out of this room, I will fuck everything up. So. Sounds Ah, uh, yes. The negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He does that. All righty. Um, so who wants to get started with their first broad ideas of the I, movie and everything? I think I will because my opinion is different from the two of you. <laughs> Uh, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, ahead, just because, like, when I mentioned the movie, I was like, ugh. And you both were like, ugh. What do you mean? Um, just speaking generally, uh, the first, I don't know, 20 minutes of the movie was pointless. It had nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Um, it was just there for reasons. I don't know. It had nothing to do with the rest of it. Uh, and, I mean, I would have liked it if that's what the whole movie was going to be about but it didn't relate to whatever the shit happened on the second half um it was kind of like two different episodes of batman put together in two different seasons so i was like this is weird mashed into a movie um the joker bits were good it was mark hamill so i was happy about that i love mark hamill as a joker but it uh, I don't know. The whole movie should have just been him, it, because then it feels too short to be focused on it being a Joker movie when it's not the whole time. Um, so overall, I was like, meh. I'd put it below average. If five is average, I'm gonna give it like a maybe a four, because just watching it in general without thinking about it. Even that kind of threw me for a loop. I was like, oh, did the movie change? What's happening? Is this a different thing? So, yeah. Um, and what what would your official score for that so far being? You said like a five? Just a flat five? I, I said like a four. A four? Okay, okay, yeah. that's fair. 
Um, this is actually my first time watching The Killing Joke. Uh, I did read The Killing Joke arc in the comic, so I was kind of reflecting my experience off of that specifically. Um, in general, the movie felt a little bit rushed uh, for the storylines, um, and I kind of wish it would have went, went, went on a little bit longer for either more content or to elaborate in certain things that felt like they just got shoehorned in kind of halfway through it, if not, you know, at weird beats of the moment. Uh, they really changed the main character focus in the movie, which I kind of wish they didn't. Because The Killing Joke, while yes, it is a technically a Joker movie, an arc, it does also talk about like the, the Gordon family, like Commissioner Gordon, Barbara Gordon, all that fun stuff. Um, so, well, give me one second. Okay. But, I mean, okay, I hadn't watched or read any of the comic i didn't know this was a you're good uh carlos if you want to come back you're still muted um but yeah, yeah I've... I've never read any of the comic stuff um so i have no comparison and it's just on its own it seemed like it didn't stand up very well like he was saying rushed that's just my basic overall opinion of it oh, is fair enough um... nothing was fleshed out enough for me understood yeah uh so for me, from what I remember about the movie, so when you said, ugh, I was like, it's, it's not that bad. It's, I don't, I don't remember it being. It felt like more work to watch it than me enjoying it. That's why it's at like a four. So my experience watching this movie, because I remember this is one of my favorite arcs in comics. So the killing joke is such a good, so good. Um, it's, there's a lot of really crazy stuff that happens in it. Every event feels like a big deal in the comic, right? Like, everything feels fleshed. Everything is always going to be fleshed out in the comics. Also, everything has a reason behind it. You know exactly what's happening at all times. It's really very... It's a very good character-driven story. Um, and then the background comes in, you're like... And it almost feels like... It almost felt like in this movie, I get what you guys are saying about it being rushed. and I do, And I did feel that. I remember feeling that way. There's not enough to the movie, and I think DC's done a great job with their with their movies at getting that in there, right? Like getting all of this information into one one hour and a half, one and a half hours, you know, whatever they're gonna do for their feature films. I thought this was as far as I, as far as it went, a good interpretation of the Killing Joke. But I do see where they try to stuff a lot into there, because this is something they could have probably made a part two for, like the Killing, like they did it for the Long Halloween. They could right. have done Killing Joke Part One and Part Two. If that they would have to break it up. I think that would have made it better. Um, there was a lot more that they could have added to it. There's a lot more that needed to be flushed out, like you guys said. I'll give it that. I wouldn't go as low as a four. I'd give it like a. F I'd give it a. I'd give it a six, just because I genuinely enjoyed the parts that were in the movie. I mean, we're gonna get into it. I thought that there were aspects of it that I still saw from the comics, and was like, maybe it's just nostalgia from reading the comics when I first watched the movie, and I was like. Oh man, you know, this this is just like the comics, or this is just it's just great to see the Joker with the camera. Like that's that's a moment where it's like seeing the Joker with the camera in itself. Then you know that was in itself. I'm not going to go into the detail of that scene yet, but it's just all right. You know, I thought yeah. it was, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I'm giving it a six. It's not high high. It's not great because I did feel like they crammed a lot into it. I think they needed a part one and part two to it, like they did with Long Halloween. That's where I'm at with it, but I didn't think it was so bad where I put it as low as a four. Sorry about that. That's all right. Yeah, just uh, annoyances and inconveniences. It's all good. Life, man. It's life. It gave Carlos his time to do his, so hop into yours. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, where I left off was... Uh, I lost my train of thought there. Um... Basically, I just feel as if, you know, they could have uh, elaborated a little bit more into the storylines, and the comics of The Killing Joke feel a lot longer than this animated thing. Um, the stylization and the quality of the animation, beautiful. Um, it, do, it does one thing in Batman that I like to see more of, which is talking. You know, I love dialogue. I love characters, you know, labbering on certain things to a degree. 
Um, so I will say that some parts of that were very interesting, especially the mental distraught you see in a certain character that we'll get into on the spoiler-based review. Uh, on top of that as well, I agree with Marcus on the earlier portion where it was... It felt like it just didn't need to be there. <laughs> a lot of it felt like it didn't need to be there. But I understand why they added it in there. So, um, qual Quality soundtrack, quality music, quality animation, pacing of the story was kind of mid. I gave it a 7 out of 10 for the initial feel and vibe of everything. Wow, pretty high. Okay. Uh, all right, so that gives us our general thoughts. We'll hop into where we get into nitty-gritty now. Um, since I went first on general, I'll go first here too then. Um, so like we're saying, the first, I don't know if it was half. It felt like half of the movie. It's all focused on Barbara Gordon, her being Batgirl. And I understand what they were trying to do is this – um, this criminal. Uh, do you remember what his name was? Um, Paris. Yeah. So Paris is a psychopath, and he starts obsessing over Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. He's like, "Oh, Batgirl, whatever. Come on, come play with me, whatnot." Damn girl, you a bad. And, yeah, and I get that. Based on the second half of the movie, they're trying to draw a comparison based on the line where Batman's like, "Oh, you don't need." He's specifically saying psychopath who's obsessing over you. You don't need something like that. It's like, oh, okay. They're saying like the Joker. And I didn't know that this was supposed to be a Joker first movie. So when that first half of the movie was cut off and it was like they didn't even mention Barbara again until like towards the end or Paris. I was like, all right. It kind of felt pointless. I get that they're drawing a parallel to like, hey, there's a villain that's obsessing over you. But... I felt like this movie was told out of order, for one. Um, they focus on Joker's backstory a lot in this movie. And I think that's where this movie should start. This movie should have started with telling, uh, here's Joker, here's, you know, him. I think that would have been better story-wise. Like, just show the flashback of him, his whole life as it cuts through all that. And what happened to him and why he became Joker. And then have like batman throwing joker back into arkham then we can do the whole paris uh things so that we can draw the comparison because while everyone knows who joker is and who joker is to batman it's still a movie on its own and it shouldn't rely on outside to make you draw that comparison it should in its own stand alone and explain everything and that was probably me my biggest gripe with this movie is how everything could have been told in a better order um, the whole Paris section should have been shorter and the Joker parts been longer because then we don't really get enough of the Batman and Joker interaction where it's they basically fight once in a theme park where Gordon gets tortured and it's kind of like, well, yeah, Joker sucks. We know this. Um, if the whole, I don't know. It just felt out of order and then not fleshed out enough where it needed to be. You want to elaborate on anything I'm mentioning here? I mean, all of what you're saying is uh, relatively true. Um, it did affect me in the same way where as I'm watching it, I felt like things kind of fell out of order. I understand why they set up Barbara to be the opening so that you have more sympathy for her for when the big climax of what the Joker does um, makes you feel even more bad for her. It also right. sets the tone for uh, Commissioner Gordon as well. As well as, you know, um, Batman having motivation. Because there, there's this whole unnecessary scene in the beginning that I just did not need to see where Barbara and Bruce are just having this argument on top of it. And then they just, they, they, they have sex. They just pound it in the, on, yeah, on that the was ceiling. Weird, yeah. It's, it's such I was, a weird random thing to add into the movie. And that's one of the I didn't like things that. I remember from that movie watching it years later. I will definitely always remember. That was such a weird way to transition to set like okay man you guys are arguing on top of a rooftop you don't you know all right it just I seems it. weird in general too and I, because yeah. he's supposed to be a mentor and i was watching this and i'm thinking i thought a lot to myself i'm like isn't barbara like 18 at this time isn't she like ju just barely legal yeah. for batman and batman's like and 30 think, something I, yeah well i think that's the thing right is it also that's the issue with the animated batman right 
they are very clear when they want him to be an older Bruce Wayne and when they're just like, and other times, they'll just be like, oh, well, he's Batman. doesn't matter what age he is. He's Batman, right? He's an adult. That's all that matters. He's Bruce Wayne with gray hair is, you know, for a fact, once he has gray hair, Bruce Wayne's an old man at that point in the Batsuit. Yeah. Right. Other than that, Bruce Wayne could be between the ages of 25 and fucking 40 and you would never know, you know? Right. And that's where I think they get away with that in, in their minds, right? Creating this yeah. and being like, it's okay that you slept with Batgirl. It's right. Not, they think, but, yeah. I, right. I will say, right, I will say that with that, because they basically made that, that business kind of, it's kind of like a business transaction if you think about it. Because Barbara is just the sidekick to... Bruce. Is that how you want? To well, 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 wait, what? well, well. I'm just saying, like the Batgirl versus Batman like spectrum. <laughs> just call it. Just call Barbara Gordon a prostitute. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm getting at. Here. That's not what I'm getting at. <laughs> this is a business transaction. No, no, no. That's not what I meant. I meant yeah. it as in like, you know, the the sidekick versus this main superhero. You know, they're a team. They're a crime fighting duo, and them having that intimate connection. Uh, that very off-putting intimate connection on top of that building that you could tell Batman was also uncomfortable by it to a degree, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like the foreshadowing. Do you remember when uh, in that scene where Batman is called to Gotham's storage um, because they found something inside that storage unit? And I love the scene where as Batman's just sitting there after having this whole conversation about people obsessing with you and all this other thing that the lights of the signage that says Gotham storage, it shows just Gotham's rage. Uh, like the, I didn't notice. Yeah, the, the T-O was like blinking, so you saw the words Gotham's rage, and I thought that was a really good setup because Batman is essentially the rage of Gotham himself. Like, he is the part where a lot of civilians who hate these criminals, who hate this, like, constant criminal syndicate and stuff, he is essentially angry at not only himself but the criminals to a degree i mean yeah he brings out justice but you also see it a lot too with him versus joker which is also very interesting so that's just something i wanted to point out there i thought that was a pretty cool thing i mean i appreciate you bringing that up because even more that is a on nice that, detail i didn't remember a small detail like that but just hearing that you can also kind of go into the batman himself is gonna is yes like you said in a way gotham's rage right it also goes into the story. Once you get into that nitty-gritty of, oh, this is what happens to Barbara, like, everything about this, even towards the end, you realize, like, Gotham's rage kind of perfectly depicts what, what he's feeling at that point. Like, everything about it's, like, he's furious. After what happens yeah. to her, after what he's going to put Gordon through, after everything that's going to happen, you know? Like, that's what you're left with. Because you're left with the why of it all. Because by the end of it, he's just kind of asked, he's kind of just wondering, like, why why is joker doing all of this why is joker why this you know why is this yeah. the extent he's going to and all he's left with is just unbridled rage you know so mm -hmm. where he's like yeah it, i'm gonna go as far as as i would go as far in the end to and we'll get to that point actually we'll get to and, that but and, and that's another thing too is like marcus was mentioning you know it, this is a joker movie it's clearly a joker based movie that has a barbara gordon scene in it of course, if you're going to make an arc about the killing joke, you have to have the infamous scene of Barbara Gordon getting shot by the Joker. That's just a scene that happens in the comics. It has to be there. How they build up to it was absolutely crap, in my opinion. But that's just me. Um, I will say that watching this had a very interesting take on Joker's backstory. Because that's been done hundreds of times. We never know the yeah. true Joker's backstory. And I think this was... Just like Jack Quan Phoenix's Joker, I liked this take on the Joker story. Right. Now, one thing I did gather from this, his story, besides him being a shitty comedian, he's apparently really good in bed because that was an innuendo joke that his wife made. Yeah. So that was funny. That was, that was like, Wait, hey, was... let's go, Joker. Let's go. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. A, I, I like. That's great. <laughs> that's like I like him you. being. Yeah, I like him being a bad comedian, and where like somebody says something. That's not actually funny, and he starts laughing at it. He's like, "Oh, that was funny." I, it kind of like slowly building that. Where then after he goes crazy, he says some bad pun, and he thinks it's hilarious. It's kind of like it's a good progression towards why he laughs at everything and thinks everything's so funny. Yeah, because uh, that um, psyche was already there prior to yeah. what makes him the Joker. 
Like, the Joker's yeah. not funny initially, anyway. Might as well make him love all of his bad jokes. Yeah. Like, not dad jokes, but bad jokes. Like, that's, that's where you're at, man. It's okay. And we've dealt with decades of this, and everyone knows how bad Joker's jokes can be. Some of them are darker than others, which mm-hmm. gets showcased near the end of the movie. Yeah. My my overall, like, going bit by bit, what I enjoyed from this movie was uh, I enjoyed the backstory scenes. I enjoyed the scenes where he's, like, most of the scenes where he's torturing Gordon, I think, were done well. Um, Batman going through the amusement park was pretty good and then just the end scene with both of them um barbara gordon getting shot i know that has to happen um i don't know it was still kind of like i didn't feel sorry for her because i felt i don't know why but as it went on it made me not like her from the first half agreed i started to feel empathize with her and then the way she progressed everything and the way batman acted it made me just like want her off screen rather than seeing more of her um so i think that really cheapened that so in general i enjoyed maybe 10 percent of this movie the i would agree um barbara barbara gordon does uh how she's portrayed in the beginning of this i didn't care for her like i didn't care for damian wayne in injustice like they they both had that weird young immature mentality of going about things like batman's giving genuinely good advice and they're just like eh, no fuck you and it's like it's dude yeah mm-hmm. it was funny while me and carlos were watching that they're like he's such a little shit i know it, and that's how i felt about barbara it's like why why go against batman's word he knows about this shit he knows what why you should never mm-hmm. pursue these things yeah. He's Batman. He is Batman. For the love of God, he's Batman. He, he has listen to Batman. He has a contingency plan for each Justice League member in case they go evil. Listen to Batman. Like, yeah. he's the one to listen to. If you're not gonna listen to anyone else, I don't care if you listen to Commissioner Gordon because he's an old cop. All right, whatever. But and yes, he's seen a lot of shit. All right, cool. You're not gonna listen to Alfred, who. I don't personally remember. Where the hell was Alfred for most of the movie? Did they show him he, much? He, he, I don't know. he was in the part where Batman is looking into um, some evidence on his, like, super cool multi-monitor computer. And uh, he was, like, there for, like, one scene and had, like, three lines. And it had no impact. It was just, like... So not enough Alfred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I've become obsessed with, like, when there's a good batman or any dc based movie that has batman in it like whatever batman scenes there are if it's a justice league movie when batman's on screen alfred should be in some of those scenes i i refuse to not to have batman without alfred it's he should Uh, be there as much as robin should be at definitely as much as batgirl should be no excuse but well (laughs) proceeding on that (laughs) arguably i feel like batgirl was too much in this one (laughs) (laughs) i let's replace I mean, I wouldn't say let's completely replace Batgirl with Alfred, because that would lead to some <laughs> uncomfortable stuff. <laughs> that actually would have been... That would lead to... I feel empathy if Alfred gets shot. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alfred gets shot, the world is pissed. What? Like, oh, in, yeah. inju- in Injustice, when Dick Grayson, when Damian Wayne kills Dick Grayson, I oh, was... shit. And then Batman cried. I'm sitting next to Marcus, and I shed real tears. I was yeah, like... Yeah, me too. I was so upset. Cause, Cause, Batman doesn't cry. Like that hit me. And Justice is such a good movie. Like, I it hit me so hard. I was like, Dick Grayson, not Dick Grayson, not Nightwing, bro. What? Like, he's the one. Speaking of things that like Batman doesn't do, let's talk about the ending real quick. About how it's like, Joker knows he lost. Joker's just like, all right, cool, lock me up like you normally do. Right. And um. When Joker tells that, it was actually a pretty decent joke, to be fair. That was, like, one of his best... I think That so. was one of his funniest jokes I've heard from his character. I laughed. <laughs> I laughed, too. I actually I, I, laughed. Yeah, I had no choice but to laugh. Like, you're just gonna move it when I try to go across. Yes. That's Joker. Yes. <laughs> well, 
I, what made me uncomfortable was Batman started to laugh, and I was like, what the fuck's about to happen? Is the movie gonna come to, like, a cool finish? And then it just shows that they're just thinking, like, laughing chemicals or whatever the fuck. It was, like, something like that. It was weird. Well, no, it the wasn't point even of it laughing is... chemicals. They were just laughing. Well, which... no, no. The point of it is that he kills Joker. Um, not necessarily. I don't think so. I don't think it, that's no, no, no. The... From the killing joke arc, yeah, no, he kills the Joker. Like it ends with him with his hands around the Joker's throat as it's panning away. Right, but it, it didn't. It didn't the portray movie, that in the ending. You know. Yeah, the movie, the way it portrayed is he was going to do what Gordon asked. Um, and I, that's where, see, I have the reverse opinion of this scene. I think that was one of the best scenes in the movie. Because it's mirrored by when he goes into uh, Arkham and he's like, before anything else, I want that we actually try to talk this out before we have to kill each other. And it's not actually Joker. And that he still holds through and tries to do that with him at the end. And Joker's like, no, we're past that. That they had that moment. And then he laughs with him at the joke. I was like, okay, I thought that was very um i don't want to say poetic and cheapen it but it was a very well written moment i enjoyed that a lot i i will also say that talking about like very well written and very well designed because that that scene was so beautiful to watch as they're laughing because like the rain and everything and just the the shading the um the scene where he crawls that we're going to go back a little bit to the part where um <laughs> the <laughs> joker dresses up as the red hood and is basically with uh, two Italian guapos just cro- oh, <laughs> robbing yeah. a chemical plant for some reason. And um, <laughs> when when Joker crawls out through the sewage, that scene where he's, like, laughing, his eye, like, it looks like his eyes are almost, like, bleeding as he's just holding up yeah. his head. Dude, such a well-drawn image and scene. Oh, yeah. That stupid image stupid build chills. Stupid build-up. But I that yeah. yeah agreed the image gave me chills and I was like bro if this is hinting at what Joker's gonna be doing to Commissioner Gordon I don't want to know. Yep. But there was a lot of good hidden in the rest of this. So I don't know if they had another go at this they could have a really good movie. This has the effect of adding, you know, you know how you can like add salt to a meal and you can't take salt away. Like you can you can yeah. add flavor, but you can't take flavor away. That's how I felt for the Batman the Killing Joke. It it had a good foundation. It had a good idea. It had a lot of source material to go off of, but it kept adding on to it. It felt like to the point where it was just mm. not as palatable as I wish it was to watch. Um, definitely not a watch again for me. And for me personally, I'm putting it, it's going to affect my score. Definitely, it's going to affect my overall score at the end. Yeah. Uh, that's a great metaphor. I like the whole salt thing a lot, actually. Thank you. Uh, just made that up on the fly. Hell yeah. Definitely um, works. Because yeah, I'm eating no, some definitely. very salty-ass spaghetti right now, and it is, <laughs> it is so savory, and I don't <laughs> like it. I've, uh, I've said my piece. Yeah, you know? Uh, you know, like, you're, even when you're doing pasta, if you're going to put salt in it, it's... I didn't make it, so I don't know. <laughs> okay dash of salt mm. i don't even like to, in the pasta while you're boiling it so that way it dissolves and but, okay but, yeah, yeah this is not a cooking channel yeah, this is not about more, this is not more about parmesan pasta. cheese kylo ren more. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah any other takeaways from this uh very interesting um, movie yeah i have nothing else to i say. mean i i definitely thought i don't know i from what i remember at the end of it i definitely remember seeing it as though he killed him but that's I also can see what you're talking about as far as like as far as it goes like him just kind of going about it the right way. It it was an overall very confusing movie. I thought it could have been what better done. I initially gave it a six. We're gonna get to that in a second, but uh, yeah, I just feel like like I said initially, it could have been broken into two different movies because there was a lot of source material with the comic. They just could have spent better. The pacing of it was definitely weird. I'll give you that. So agreed. And so, I don't know, just less, less Barbara, less, <laughs> less Barbara, Barbara. Less, Barbara. <laughs> less Barbara. Like, I mean, there's no less Barbara than if she gets shot. Right. But like, then there's no, Barbara. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just saying, but that like, either, you know, 
if you wanted to start this movie, and this is just, tell me if this would be the worst thing. Start the movie, her opening the door. Because what everyone remembers from The Killing Joke, him with the camera, shooting Barbara Gordon. Yeah. And then he, and then in the comics, strips her naked, takes pictures of her that way. For, so there's to show Gordon. And that's yep. how she, and that's how they find her. And I, and then she's crippled, and, and she's Oracle for the rest of the world. And Oracle her is better than Barbara. Gordon, oh, agreed, by the way. agreed, dude. I, it's Batgirl is not is not Oracle. Oracle is one of the best characters in in the Bat family. I don't. I'm not a Batgirl fan. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like seriously, give me Alfred. Get, get, <laughs> get, uh, give me Alfred or give me Death. <laughs> Yeah, he could be Bat Butler. Bat Butler? Dude, not even Bat... Not... Wow. <laughs> wow. Nah, dude, you don't even have to give Alfred anything. You ever seen the show Gotham with, with like, a young Alfred? Uh, no, the, there's a show called Pennyworth. What do you mean? Yeah, that too. there's a show all about Alfred. Yeah, no, there's a show all about Alfred, but in Gotham specifically, dude, Alfred threw hands with a lot of dudes. He was... Right, I've heard. He was ride or die for Bruce Wayne till the, till the end. Yeah. So. But yeah, yeah. I'll just get back to Alfred. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Just reminding you of what wasn't there. But I will say, I remember there being such an absence of Alfred. That's why I keep bringing it and up. And too like, much Barbara. There's just so much Barbara, and then there is even more Barbara, and then there's an X-rated too much Barbara. So there, yeah. you know, that's that. Um, yeah, guys. Overall. It was an okay movie. You guys are definitely... I would say through this conversation, I wouldn't go... I don't know if I'm still going, like, as low as, a, like, a three. I'd... Do you guys have any changes in yours? But, yeah, I think I'm down to, like, a four. I'd say I'm down to a four from a six at the start of this. Marcus, okay. since you uh, went first, you can go ahead as well for the next one, and I'll close out with mine. Uh, I... I would... Like, mentally, I'd put it at a three. The only thing that wants to put it to a four is the fact that Joker's joke was funny. Um, <laughs> that's, such, that's such a fair argument, too. It's like, that, one that, good joke, one good joke, bump up. <laughs> yeah, like, if his joke was shit, it would have, like... It, it would have dropped it, actually. Because my mood end on a bad is so joke. wishy-washy, and it's like, that left me with a good impression when it finished instead of i was already confused when it ended but at least i had something positive in my head otherwise it, it would have been all sour so i i'll probably still keep it at a four so with me having the initial highest review uh, and rating out of all three of us going into this fucking seven yeah i i i love the idea of it because i love the killing joke arc in the comics i always thought it was such a good arc for batman um mm -hmm. but dude i'm going back to that analogy of they put way too much bullshit into it that they didn't need to do they should have just focused on the joker and have like a little segment i don't even i don't even care about that paris dude why did he even have to be there you know it's I don't and know. they give they give Barbara Gordon the the Damian Wayne treatment from Injustice. I just didn't like her. I thought she was absolutely mid the entire way through. So I mean that drops mine from a seven out of ten to a five point five, dude. I mean, no decimals. That was the one oh no, yeah, that was the one rule. That's oh. why we have a that's why we have a scale out of ten. We're not doing decimals. oh in that case a flat five. A that's a flat ten. five. That's a flat oh, five. Screw that. Oh, yeah. Then you yeah. you actually have eleven numbers to choose from. There's no reason we're using decimals now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. No. That, that's a flat five for me. Um. All because, right. dude. Dead in the middle. Dead. Dead in the middle because it wasn't great. It wasn't bad either. I had fun watching it. I mean, if a movie can, especially an animated movie, if an animated movie can make me have fun watching it especially if i hate the character that it starts off being the main pro tag quote unquote um it's it's, yeah. it's still a average movie fair enough yeah. uh do you guys mind if i just throw this out there as far as like a title that we could just add to this or even a caption too much barbara for what uh no I, it was actually me on that note uh less barbara more alfred exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point like like i want those that's exclamation a good title. points he, on the he, title he has he like, had to <laughs> make sure three got in there that's how much carlos loves alfred <laughs> like that's how much we all love alfred i was just the one to speak up about it right? I mean, you're not wrong <laughs> yeah he, he's such a good like, character 
Alfred is the yeah. goaded character, and you gave him like one scene that I remember. I don't even remember seeing him in that scene. That's why I'm like, oh, that sucks. There was very like, little Alfred. Where the yeah. fuck is Alfred? <laughs> like, yeah, we got All we right. got we you, got more about Paris and his family and the freaking mafia than we had more of Alfred. Like what? Like right, the right. fact that there's so much like conflict and so many like mixed emotions and you know who's usually the emotional balance and the great moral compass of alfred. everything that like is there as the batman's emotional balance alfred <laughs> so well yeah so okay we could since we're done with this i was gonna say we could review another movie or there's also the opportunity of opening this up to reviewing other things like right now, you know, Cyberpunk was out, um, and Carlos has got it on his list to watch next. Uh, Would you guys want to mm. do a review of shows too, or just stick to movies for now? Um, I'd be down for shows because I'm gonna be real with you. I've watched Cyberpunk Edge Runners three times now, so I have okay. not watched it at all. So good, um, so good. Yeah, I mean, I'm down to go into shows too. I, I'm not against it. So, like, do we want to set a movie for next week so you have time to watch the whole show? Yeah, for sure. Because I, I think it would be a good one to review to see if we like doing shows as well and have longer reviews for shows. Yeah, I'd be down for that. For, like, shorter shows like The Edge Runners, because it's not super long. It's an OVA. It's not, like, a whole three seasons overlord. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, before we go, let's set, like we did last time, what's going to be our movie for next week. Well, so everyone knows. I recommended The Killing Joke last time, so I'll leave that open to one of you two, if you guys have mm. a preference of what we'd need to see. I so, have the, yeah. I have HBO open right now, and I'm scrolling. So and I'm still. Yeah, I was thinking something like, I mean, I'm always down for anything Justice League based. If we're looking in a DC, if we're looking in a, if you want to do something animated, keep it kind of that theme of it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we can do DC's League of Super Pets just came out a couple months ago. I was ago, gonna recommend that. I was gonna recommend that. It's I, I, I saw I, that. I watched movie. it in theaters. It's actually funny. Like if nothing it's, else, The Rock and Kevin Hart make make this movie so funny. If I've seen that already, I would like to recommend uh, Super Pets would be an interesting one because I haven't seen it yet. But possibly Batman versus the Ninja Turtles would be a really good one in my opinion to watch because <laughs> I love the Ninja Turtles. So I haven't seen that one yet. I do too, but like, <laughs> like I love the Ninja Turtles too. I just don't know if I want to watch an entire movie about Batman and the Ninja Turtles. Apparently, it's really interesting and really good. Yeah, but they told us that about Teen Titans. Yeah, and DC's gonna tell us that about True. everything we're gonna watch. But we're <laughs> no, no, no. Like I've heard good things about Teen Titans: The Judas Contract. And that review will go up at some point if it's not already up. Yeah, and it me was and Martin, me and Mark Martin had a good time watching that fucking movie. Yeah. Tara. Tara. <laughs> well, yeah. we have to have something to watch. Hmm. Um, Coming soon, Lego DC Shazam. Magic no, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, you know what movie I've never seen? What up? Batman and Robin with Arnold Schwarzenegger the, and Mr. The, Freeze. Well, no, but also the movie that the DC movie that almost everyone dogs on, Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds. I wouldn't watch that. I'm like, I, I, I'm sorry, I'd watch it. As a kid, I remember liking it, and then I know how bad it was as a Green Lantern movie. But it was fun for me as a kid, so it, I would like to watch it. But I know I'm gonna hate it though. That's time. gonna be a review then. I I, I say Ryan Reynolds, uh, Green Lantern. All right, let's do it. Because uh, yes, I've sir. Never seen it. We have to have we have to have good reviews, mid reviews, and terrible reviews, guys. We have to we have to have a balance. Uh, I can't wait for our first zero. Oh <laughs> we gotta, my god! I wonder what movie I've is going to be a zero. I already think, guys, coming into this movie, my pre-review. We could this could be my first ever pre-review for this podcast. Uh -huh. My pre-review for Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern is a one. <laughs> Try to make me feel anything higher than that. Because I goal, hate... If I like this movie more than a one, my goal will be to increase your one to a two. That, I, that's going to be a challenge. I challenge you to do this. <laughs> I, do you remember how big this man's head got? Do you I, remember? I never saw this movie, period. Oh, Neither have I. 
You're not going to enjoy this movie. <laughs> I already added it to my watch. So I added it to my list on Hulu. Let's go, baby! I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna oh, watch this excited. tonight. Oh no! <laughs> I'm so excited. Same, <laughs> guys. Uh, we're reviewing Green Lantern. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening uh, to our opinion about this movie that was mid. Have a good one. <laughs>